Good day to my invisible audience. Uh, I'm uh, Curtis Apps, uh, Director of the South African Population Research Infrastructure Network and Director of Population Science at the Africa Health Research Institute. But I'm talking to you about an exciting development, which is the formation of the Africa Population Cohort Consortium. And I thank you for this opportunity to present the work we are doing to establish a consortium of cohorts in Africa, inspired by the IHCC, of course. I speak on behalf of the collaboration for the establishment of the APCC, CEAPCC in short, a group of African scientists that I co-lead with JPR Chingodero and Evelyn Kitao, both from the Africa Population Health Research Center, Nairobi, Kenya. This collaboration recently received funding from the Wellcome Trust and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to embark on the formative phase of the APCC. Um, around about the same time as the establishment of the IHCC, a group of funders, including the Wellcome Trust and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, NIH, the UK Research Institute, and the South African Medical Research Council, discuss the feasibility of supporting a consortium of African cohorts. To test the waters, so to speak, they organized a meeting in early March uh, 2020 in Entebbe, Uganda, where about 50 scientists from Africa endorsed the idea of an African consortium of population cohorts. Two of the IHCC coaches were actually at this meeting, too, Jeffrey Ginsberg and Michelle Ramsey. So, Following the scoping meet meeting, a scoping report was commissioned uh, and it was done by Nikki Tiffin and that was published in March uh, 2021. And that expanded on uh, what such an African population co consortium uh, could look like and a potential process to establish uh, the APCC. That was then used as a basis by the Wellcome Trust to issue a call for proposals in April 2021 for interested parties uh, to bid for hosting or conducting the formative phase of the APCC. Um, we were lucky to receive this competitive award in August 2022. Uh, we've received the funding and we are now uh, at the start of the APC formative phase. And during my presentation, I will uh, go through uh, what we're currently doing and what we envisage to do with regards to uh, setting up the APCC. Uh, following the formative phase, uh, the output actually that we are contracted to do is to produce a blueprint for the APCC, a document uh, that set out the detail and we'll go a little bit through what that blueprint will contain. That will then lead up to the establishment of the APCC, hopefully during 2024. This formative phase will take approximately 18 months. Um, there's a very specific expectation by the funders of what should be in this APCC blueprint, and let me go through this very quickly. Uh, it should contain a stakeholder engagement plan, it should have links, to relevant and current initiatives in Africa and globally, like H3 Africa, the Deltas, the NHI DSI Africa, African Pathogens Genomics, and various other initiatives, and should have, you know, position itself with regards to those other initiatives uh, to uh, have synergy with them and to, of course, uh, establish links to mutual benefit with those other initiatives. It needs to have a research vision and objectives documented, the structure and components, including the cohort membership and how it's organized, its governance and management structures, its open science and data sharing principles. And I heard a bit of what Sanjay said previously around some of the challenges around open science and data sharing uh, in uh, LMICs. Uh, it should have clear ethical principles and an approach to strengthening African science capacity and leadership that should have an evaluation framework. And then finally, a set of cost estimates of the minimal viable product of the APCC. The CE APCC aim is not just to produce this blueprint, but to create a transformational capability and forum on population-based cohorts 
bringing together a broad spectrum of African scientists, policymakers, community contributors, and other stakeholders throughout the formative phase to co-create an evidence-based APCC and build enthusiasm and support for its eventual implementation and long-term sustenance. Our collaboration is supported by a range of both international organizations, including the IHCC and the African initiatives, including uh, DSIA, Bionet, H3 Africa, Deltas, Inspired EA, Afro PhD, and the African Research Universities Alliance. So what are we going to do? Um, we have developed a stakeholder engagement approach that will make maximal use of the 18 months available to us to expand our reach and create a learning environment to move us rapidly to the co-creation with all stakeholders of the APCC blueprint and a high level of enthusiasm for the APCC. We've been through the setup phase. We're now at the start of the scoping review and stakeholder identification phase. That will move on to a phase in the second quarter of next year where there will be a, a series of themed workshops where we will engage a much larger uh, audience uh, of people and scientists and, and policymakers and community representatives that are interested in the APCC and its cohorts uh, to develop certain themes that have come out through the scoping review and stakeholder identification, including, most importantly, engaging with the leaderships of all the cohorts that we have identified. That will then move into a phase of work stream based collaboration where uh, interested individuals uh, coming from the themed workshops and identified additionally will be organized in the work streams that I will uh, describe later, later on. And, and those work streams are more or less mapped to what we should be putting into the blueprint and they will develop a consensus around what those components should be. Uh, in the final phase, and this will be largely focused around an in-person uh, conference or summit uh, in early in 2024, where uh, the blueprint will be adopted and then be able to be submitted to the funder cooperative, uh, and hopefully that then will lead to funding this initiative uh, going forward. Um, we also want to, um, we have an investment economist uh, on our team that will also, because we anticipate that we will be collecting a huge amount of information, more than what needs to go into the blueprint. And we want to organize that information into investment opportunities cost to prioritize them uh, so that other funders that may be interested in supporting other aspects in addition to the core funding of the APCC may want to use that as a basis to engage further with the community that we've established. Um, one of the things, first steps is to produce a database of existing cohorts in Africa. And here are the preliminary criteria we are currently using to set up uh, the database. We are aiming at a size of at least 10K, not 100K, and 2,000 in the case of birth cohorts. It should be population-based, i.e. an identified place of residence, full representation of the target population, longitudinal, uh, and it can be facility or clinic, a clinic cohort in the case of known catchment population. Uh, the duration of the cohort follow-up should be at least five years, uh, or with the intention of funding to do so. Uh, two years for both cohorts, it can be an open or a closed cohort, panel studies, but not repeat cross-sectional studies. There should be clear inclusion and exclusion criteria. Uh, the status should be ongoing or at least follow-up uh, until recently uh, with uh, the possibility of picking up uh, the cohort uh, should funding and opportunity arise to do so. Um, data should include health status uh, and preferably by samples and ex excludes purely socioeconomic or agricultural, agricultural information. Uh, we would be including some clinical cohorts, especially if they represent a major resource, like for example, the IDEA network. 
Um, this is the 83 cohorts that we've identified so far. Although cohorts from East and Southern Africa are well represented, there are gaps in West Africa and an obvious lack of coverage in, in, in North Africa. And uh, we, uh, if there's anyone in the audience that can help us with that, uh, I would be really appreciate to hear from you, uh, but we also have concerted efforts to address those gaps uh, that are evident in the map that we've identified so far. But nevertheless, we've already identified cohorts in 22 countries in Africa. Our research vision, vision, although in the APCC blueprint, its research vision and objectives will, objectives will be based on the stakeholder engagement process. We are obviously entering into this process with a vision to harness the huge opportunity of population cohorts in Africa, to champion new multidisciplinary engagement and research through the lens offered by complex system thinking, and the SDG goal of universal health coverage with primary health care as its core element. African cohorts have a history of contributions in the field of demography, epidemiology, and migration and population mobility, often mediated by networks such as INDEPS, the Alpha Network that specialized in HIV epidemiology, among, amongst others. Over the last decade, cohorts in Africa have expanded the involvement in omics through H3 Africa and Precision Public Health. They have also documenting the rising role of NCDs alongside multimorbidity resulting from continued burden of infectious diseases as well. The COVID-19 pandemic and repeating Ebola outbreaks continue to underscore the importance of epidemic preparedness and the role of networks of cohorts that the role that networks of cohorts can play in this regard. Finally, COP27 in Egypt again reminded us of the disproportionate impact of climate change on, on LMICs, and the African cohorts are increasingly focusing their research on planetary health and climate adaptation measures. Population cohorts has the unique ability to study the complex of interlinking factors that determine human health and well being by considering societal and cultural factors impacted by political realities and health inequities. In this context, our ability to link to and enhance health and social care information systems are important. The intention is a research platform that is responsive to emerging priorities to ensure the SDG goal of universal health coverage through intervention at primary health care and population level. Our activities are organized into work streams that to some extent mirror what needs to be provided in the APCC blueprints. The conveners listed here of the work streams will build consensus around the content of these areas throughout the stakeholder engagement process. Uh, there is a work stream uh, led by Johannes Atela from the African Research and Impact Network and Tumani Malenga from the Africa Institute for Development Policy that has developed an engagement framework and, and we had initial meetings with WHO Afro and is in the process of reaching out to other regional entities. Dorcas Kamuja from the Kemri Wellcome Trust Institute is working on ethics frameworks and measures to harmonize ethical approval processes for multi-cohort studies. The research visions and objectives work stream is working with a large database of full text publications from cohorts in Africa to use machine learning to mine and classify research theme uh, from this corpus of, of publications. Mercy is the executive lead of the Africa Afro PhD network and is responsible to develop the UHC and PhD part of our research vision. Agnes and Sikulili is working closely with Nikki Mulder uh, of the, uh, the coordinating uh, unit of uh, DSI Africa to ensure synergy with the DSI initiatives. And Michelle, uh, Ramsey is helping to ensure integration with the many, uh, many omics related initiatives on the continent. Baba, director of the Regional Institute for Population Studies in Ghana, is leading our effort to integrate into other capacity building efforts in Africa, including the Delta uh, Network. So finally, how can the IHCC assist us? It can assist us to involve cohorts in Africa. Uh, it can participate in our st uh, stakeholder engagement activities. 
And I will certainly be constantly feeding Scott uh, with uh, invitations uh, for IHCC members to uh, in, uh, participate in our workshops. Uh, you can share your experience, particularly with the IHCC governance arrangements, initiatives like the IHCC Atlas and cohort in a box. These are all things that are will be extremely useful to us uh, during this uh, formative phase of the APCC. Uh, we want you, uh, we are looking at you to inform us uh, about multi cohort research, how to promote that, what works, what re research opportunities exist. And then in conclusion, uh, I just want to acknowledge everyone that have been working hard at, at making this a reality. And a particular wor word of appreciation to Jeffrey Ginsberg, who was there at the init initiation of this. Uh, effort and have guided us uh, throughout this uh, process and has been a great friend to us. Thank you very much. Not too sure how we handle questions or comments if there are any. We have a question in the chat here in Zoom. Okay, let me have a look at the chat. Uh, I wonder if you know of a model where cohort entity has received industry pharmacy funding and has been able to pre-negotiate guaranteed lowered pricing on access to any health care that come out of such resources. I don't know of a specific example. Uh, there certainly might be. Uh, and I mean, I'm just sort of the area that I'm familiar with is HIV. And they, of course, over the years, there's been a very productive collaboration with the pharmaceutical industry to make uh, uh, antiretroviral treatment and other preventative products available at the uh, affordable rate to uh, LMICs, of course, uh, mediated through the Global Fund. But uh, I know that certainly the UK Biobank and all of us have recently had very productive uh, collaborations uh, with uh, industry uh, to enhance their cohort uh, capabilities. Uh, question, can you elaborate a bit more on what success looks like at the end of the formative phase? Two things. Uh, we need to end up with a clear plan of what the APCC uh, should look like. Uh, and an implementable plan as well. But most importantly, uh, to really have built up a momentum uh, of enthusiasm for people to and the cohorts in Africa to engage and, and make a success of the APCC. So those two aspects, uh, for me, is the key success measures of it. Question? Uh, that's my. I think that's a comment to the first question. Uh, it's not an Africa-specific example, but I understand this is the approach of the variant bio, for example. We have another question. Um, are you able to share more about the work with the NIH DSI-A? Is there thinking around architecting data in federated approach enabling networking of disparate data sources while enabling local control? Definitely. So um, in, in the funding that we have, we will be uh, appointing someone uh, for 50% of that person's time throughout this uh, effort uh, from uh, uh, Nikki's unit. And that person will be tasked specifically to assess uh, the activities uh, within the DSI Africa. I just recently attended uh, the DSI Africa first uh, uh, meeting in Cape Town, and I was struck by many of the initiatives that would be very relevant to this formative phase of the APCC. So this person will work specifically to identify those and to say, well, here are things that is happening within DSI Africa that we can just 
learn from and don't have to duplicate. Or here are applications or gaps that are of particular relevance to longitudinal population uh, cohorts uh, that we need to take up and plan for uh, further work and delivery in the context of APCC. And so, although there's a lot of data work and standardization happening within DSI Africa, there are going to be aspects of it uh, that would be that would be a niche for APCC uh, to work on uh, within our data and methodology work stream. There is also some additional investment by the Wellcome Trust through the Inspire Network to also look at uh, some data models and harmonization and standardization of longitudinal data uh, of relevance uh, to the APCC, and they would be working closely with us uh, in this process. Thank you. So the final question is, given the topics for this morning on engagement of cohorts from LMIC participants, can you comment on how you're going to gain the trust of people across the African continent? No small feat it is. Absolutely. And I think the key to that is reflected in uh, the diagram that I showed you before, that long process of engagement, collaboration, and co-creation. Uh, to the extent that we are successful in engaging cohorts and allowing them to explore together some very difficult questions around uh, cohort involvement uh, in open science and data sharing and uh, contributing to consortia such as this, uh, working with industry, working together, working with partners from the north, uh, all of that we need to explore and, and develop consensus around how APCC should facilitate those activities. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, that is our plan. Thank you. There are no more questions at this time, but we can give it one more minute for anyone to submit another question in the chat. I would be quite interested in any comment from the floor about how IACC, you know, what are the things in sort of the IACC environment that we should pay, APCC formative phase should pay particular attention to that you think might be useful to us. If anyone wants to comment on that, I'll appreciate it. We have a question that came in. How will you balance existing cohorts with blueprints for building future cohorts in Africa? Um, you would see from what I've uh, presented from our uh, preliminary uh, uh, assessment and uh, that there's already, you know, we've already identified 83 cohorts in Africa. Um, so, an important task is to involve those cohorts uh, to establish the commonalities and joint interests between those cohorts. But on the other hand, it is also to some extent already, ev already evident from that map that there are gaps. Uh, not perhaps, well, certainly obvious geographic gaps encouraged by cohorts, but there may also be thematic gaps. Uh, in, in cohort uh, coverage or realization of cohort potential. So for example, uh, cohorts, uh, there may be, I know of many cohorts that have by samples, but don't have uh, the support uh, and resources to really fully characterize and analyze and investigate those samples, for example. Uh, so uh, that is what I meant by those investment opportunities that we will document, uh, uh, quantify, qualify, so that uh, it becomes clear where priorities are and opportunities of investment to enhance uh, 
the capabilities of cohorts within Africa. Thank you. We have a final comment. It says, Cobus, count on IHCC members and community to be at your side to create this important platform for the global community. Many of the things you mentioned in your talk, IHCC can assist with. Thank you very much. And that is from uh, Jeffrey Ginsburg. Thanks, Jeff. Well, thank you so much for the panel. We are at time. If you have any closing thoughts, you can do that now before we head to the next session. Thank you. I only wish that I could be actually in a room with all the wonderful IHCC summit participants uh, to you know, benefit from your input and discussions. Thank you.